Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll start off the service today with I Saw the Light. Now, this is a toe tapper. <laughs> this is the Hank Williams I Saw the Light. So I expect to see smiling faces and a joy that I saw the light. I let Jesus in. So please stand as you are able and let us see. Several years now, so they're 
there are in Chronicles, so anytime you want to join them, they'll be happy to have you at 5 We're just starting 2 Chronicles, so they can jump right in at the beginning of 2 Chronicles. Second Chronicles, which is kind of nice, not, not uh, coming in in the middle when you don't know what's been going on. Let's just study your Bible real hard, which we hope you're doing. Um, and then Friday night's our regular uh, AA meeting here. And other than the things coming up ahead, which I'm sure you're able to read, um, are there any other announcements that we might have missed? Kevin, we're glad to see you back up and going, and we're able to join us today. Hope you brought your appetite. <laughs> okay. Well, if there's nothing else, then today our call to worship is going to be a special reading of uh, Pastor Grace and Tony. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world, and the light shone in the darkness. Jesus said, you are the light of the world, and the light shall not be quenched. Oh, this song is for children of all ages. We're going to throw back into your childhood and sing this little light of mine. Jesus? Yes. yes. I know you do. I know you love 
of Jesus. And Jesus loves you. Jimmy, you love Jesus. And Bryson, you love Jesus. And so you're going to let Jesus shine all the time wherever you go. I know you bring lots of love and laughter everywhere you go. So, can we sing? Can you listen to that verse one more time? Okay, now, Journey, I need you to listen. You ready? Yeah. Can you sing with me? Yeah.
If you would look in the bulletin at our prayer request, as you can see, Kenneth is doing greatly, is greatly improved. He is having a procedure on October 10th, so if you can keep that in prayer. Michelle is having a procedure on Tuesday. So be in prayer for that. Are there other prayer requests? Prayers for Oasis and the youth group. They both got off to such a wonderful start. So praise God for that, and, and it keeps going in the same vein. Prayers for Oasis and the youth group that they keep going strong. Others? Yes. I have a praise. My yes. mom and dad will celebrate 77 years. Uh,
bring them in to share the message of Christ. Anyone else? I know you always include our military, but yes. Dearest Heavenly Father, we come unto you at this time seeking your favor. We glorify your holy name, for you alone are worthy of our praise. You alone are God and created all that is. You alone created the heavens and the earth. You created us in your image, and we have fallen from that image. And Lord, we, we seek to return to that place where we can stand before you. But you had to make the way for that as well. And we are forever grateful. Lord, we thank you that we can call you the great physician for the healing and that you have been giving to Kenneth, for Brooke, for the continued help that you have been giving to her and that she is able to be home. Lord, we pray that you would continue to sustain her as she is completes her training, Lord, that all would go well, that soon the insurance would kick in and she would be able to receive this new medication. But Lord, we're still, we're still counting on looking to you for perfect healing, for perfect and complete healing by your hand. For that miracle that would glorify you. Lord, we ask that you would be with all of those who are suffering from the COVID. Our area is in the red and the numbers have been slowly rising. We praise you that our children are still able to go to school. We praise you that our teachers are still able to teach. And that very few students have had to miss school. And we pray that this third round of vaccines will knock out this new variant. Lord. This morning, I heard a little girl had wanted to develop love glue that married couples would have it poured on them so they would stay in love forever. And it looks like Judy's parents got a piece of that. 77 years as husband and wife that you have blessed them and joined them together. Lord, they are such a witness as to what can happen when you are a part of that marriage. When you are the third rope that makes the binds that tie. The binds that are strong. That no matter what happens in life, no matter what happens in marriage from the beginning to the end, that you hold strong. Lord, 
We praise you for them. We praise you for these godly parents and for how they have raised Judy and brought her up to be a godly woman and she has in turn raised her family. Lord, guide and direct, lift up more, more families, more husbands and wives that have that staying power, that have that glue, that binds, that comes from your being a part of the marriage. Lord, we thank you for the turnout at the men's breakfast. And we thank you for the upcoming Oasis and Youth Group and all of the activities in our communities that are coming up, prayer walks and different events, Bible studies, Sunday school class, all of these different things, Lord. Let us not lose sight that these are from you and that these are for you and these have nothing to do with us unless they have everything to do with you. Let us never lose sight that our purpose is to serve you, to broaden the kingdom. Lord, it is with heavy hearts that we pray for our military, that we pray for families, mothers and fathers, children, spouses who are grieving the loss of their soldier who has been killed in these last days. Lord, we don't understand all that goes on in military decisions. We, we hear what is on the news, we see the videos, and we make decisions based on what we see without having all the intelligence, without having all the facts. Lord, you know the full scheme of things. You know how all of this is going to turn out. And it is in your hands. It is in your hands. No matter who is in the White House, no matter who is in Congress, no matter who is in charge of the Taliban or in charge of Afghanistan, you are in charge of the world. You are in charge of your church. And that will never change. You will never be overthrown. You will never be defeated. You will never lose a battle. For you have already won. And let us hold on, hold fast to that. That while there is strife here on earth, strife between men and women, strife between co countries and nations and religions, Lord, the only strife is between heart knowledge of you and rejection of you. Lord, we pray. We pray that the leaders of the Taliban would know that you are the Christ, that you would visit them in dreams and visions and would lay upon them that they are persecuting you that they are kicking against the goats. And that they would put a halt, that they would be stopped just as you stopped Paul. That you would come into their into their minds as they sleep at night and say, why why are you persecuting me and my people? Why? I am the one 
one true God. You've read about me. I'm more than a prophet. I am the Son of God. I am God. Lord, we pray this. In Jesus' holiest of names, we pray this. For it was he who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Questions and 
is in. Take notes. To dig deep. And he's encouraging them to be grounded in holiness. Turn back to Isaiah, the 49th chapter, and verses 1 through 13. And the prophet Isaiah is continuing talking to the exiles as they have returned. Listen to me, you islands. Hear this, you distant nations. Before I was born, the Lord called me. For my birth, he has made mention of my name. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. He said to me, you are my servant. You are my servant, Israel, in whom I will display my splendor. Before Abraham, before any of them were born, he, God, had determined that Israel was going to be a nation of servants unto him, and they were going to display God's splendor unto the world. But I said, I've labored to no purpose. I have spent my strength in vain and for nothing. Yet what is due me is in the Lord's hand, and my reward is with my God. Hey, I've I worked my tail off, and nothing has come of it. And God, you've got my reward, and I'm tired. What's going on here? Lord, I'm tired. I've worked and I'm not seeing the fruits of the labor. It's just one battle after another battle. And then we were taken into captivity. And Lord, these people aren't coming to know you as Lord. Verse 5. And now the Lord says, he who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself, for I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has been my strength. He says, it's too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept. What do you mean it's too small? What do you mean it's too small a thing to keep all of these Israelites back and bring them back unto you? I can't keep them together back unto you. I can't keep this flock together back unto you. And you're saying this is too small a task for me? I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring my salvation to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nation, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and rise up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful. The Holy One of Israel has chosen you. This is what the Lord says. In the time of my favor, I will answer you. And in the day of salvation, I will keep you. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people. To restore the land and to reassign its desolate inheritances. To say to the captives, come out. Come out and to those in darkness, be free. They will feed beside the roads and find on every barren hill. They'll neither hunger nor thirst, nor 
will the desert heat or the sun beat upon them? He who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them beside the springs of water. I'll turn my mountains into roads and my highways will be raised up. See, that they'll come from afar, some from the north, some from the south, some from the west, some from the east, some from the region of Aswan. Shout for joy, O heavens. Rejoice, O earth, O mountains, for the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. There's three parts to this. The servant's call to go to Israel. And that's the Messiah's call. And it's our call to reach out to the Jewish nation. To tell them that their Messiah has come. Our Messiah has come. The second part of this is that we are to be a light to Israel, but we are not only to be a light to Israel, and that Israel is not, the prophets of Israel are not only to be a light to Israel, but that that task is too small. We're not only to be a light within our congregation, just to those around us of lifting up and encouraging one another, we're to be a light to all of those people out there. This job is too small for us. And you think, this job's too big for me. There's too much work and there's not enough of us. Well, God says it's too small a work for you. He wants to give us more work. He must reach out to the Gentiles as well. He must reach out to those in the streets. He must reach out to those who are sleeping in their beds who do not know the Savior. And the third part, although they initially reject the Savior, although they initially reject Israel will call on the name and receive the new covenant. There will be those Israelites who will call on the name of the Messiah. And that has been seen more and more. They're called Messianic Jews. We had one here for the Savior meal. And receive the new covenant in Jesus' blood. Every knee will bow. Now, I want you to see this. There will those who will bow out of gratitude and out of adoration and just fall on their knees and it won't hurt. I think if I fell on my knees right now and tried to get back up, this left knee would be screaming. But would fall on their knees and just say, Jesus, Holy One of God, hallelujah, you're here, thank you, you've come at last. And then there are going to be those that will be forced on their knees. Against their will, they will be forced on their knees and they will say, yes. You are Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy One. And I have to bow before you. Because I am unrighteous and you are the Holy God. Every knee will bow and call upon the name of Jesus. Some will bow out of adoration. Some will bow because they cannot stand before a holy God. They will be forced to their knees. Now, 
Imagine you're walking down through the parking lot at Myers. And Jesus comes. And you are down on your knees. Glory, hallelujah. How many people around you are being forced to their knees and can't raise their heads to sing hallelujah but are heads down because they cannot look upon a holy God. You're out in your yard doing yard work. Those of you who live in town. Those of you who live out in the boondocks. Okay. Those of you who live in town, how many of your neighbors are going to be being forced down on their knees? How many in your family, your extended family, are going to be forced down on their knees? Are you being the light? Are they going to come down on their knees singing glory, hallelujah, praise God, Jesus has come again? Or are they going to be one of the ones that's forced down? Now, I said I'd make this sermon short, and I see Gloria back there worrying about the clock. She's been downstairs and checked on the food. That's okay. Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. I can go on for another 10? No. No. I've been told that. <laughs> How are you being the light? How are you being the light? We live in precarious times. When Jesus is coming back, we don't know. When that drunk driver is going to come across the road, we don't know. When that guy's going to run stop sign, hit that kid walking across the street, we don't know. When COVID's going to strike, and hit that unknown heart murmur that you didn't know you had. We don't know. Are you being the light to those around you? So when it's time to stand before God, they bow with gratitude and love and adoration instead of out of instead of oh my God to Oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? Be the light. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your holiness. We praise you that you came and entered into our lives and gave us a peace that passes all understanding that you sent us your son who would die for us your son who shed his blood that we may enter into your kingdom that we may say holy 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 lord god almighty that we may be able to be the light unto others that they may come to know who you are and know the love and the majesty and the mercy that is new each and every day. And the joy that can be theirs in following you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand to say what we believe through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
for this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward to take of our tithes and our offerings.
will now sing uh, Walking in Sunlight. Hymn number 336.